Now, given the the early rocker covers clean up, they're still not 100% clean, but they're a lot better than they were. Um, a lot less fake looking as well than the, the bead blasted ones. So those should be good to, to use. Uh, I've been looking at the pinion gear. So I do have two of these and I'm pretty sure I need the longer um, adjuster here. So I've started taking one of those apart. I managed to press the bearing off it. Um, that's the bearing there. And I've undone the, the two nuts that hold the pinion into the carrier. And you can see how these always get sort of mangled up on the edges there, especially this one. Um, and there's also a, a tab washer that, that locks the top one of these in place and there was this washer in between the two and this is half of the thrust washer that's in there. Um, I just degreased everything and then heated this nut up uh, just with my, my little propane torch. I didn't need to go to the oxyacetylene and then I was able to undo it. And I'm just pressing the pinion out of the housing now in my little press so that's pretty much ready to drop out um, and then I can sort of clean this up and uh, see if if it's this one or the shorter one that I actually need to use I'm not sure how you tell uh, it's a bit hard to tell from the parts books and there's no numbers or anything on these so I'm just gonna have to sort of screw it into the back of the torque tube I guess and see what looks correct managed to get the the bearing out of this housing uh, it literally came out with a bang on the press it, lots of pressure lots of pressure and then all of a sudden bang and out it popped um, so you can clearly see there is a difference between the two here I've looked in the parts book uh, but as you can see there isn't much to go on um, this does seem to be a shorter one and this seems to be shorter as well it's got numbers for these they call it a sleeve housing um, up to a particular sh chassis number which doesn't really help me at all um, 10 ba 132 so if we look on this one it's a different number 10 ba 132 mark two three and four only and then there's a 10BA59, which is Mark 1, which is the early cars. So, once again, I'm completely confused about what I've got and which parts I need. Uh, then it occurred to me to look at the pinions. And this is my new pinion, and this is the old one. And you can see they're different lengths. So... I'm pretty sure that means for this pinion I need the shorter carrier, which, which would make sense. So obviously the, the pinion sort of goes in there like that. But now that's got me wondering um, if this pinion is shorter, where's the difference in length? And does that mean that my drive shaft is going to be the wrong length? So Basically, this was the drive shaft that came out of that torque tube. And I just had it shortened by the same amount that the torque tube was shortened. Um, so now I don't know if the crown wheel and pinion and the, uh, the, the, that carrier I've got, is that all going to work? How do I tell? Um, I guess I just have to kind of test assemble everything and see where it all lines up. Um, which is kind of going to be interesting. So I'm guessing if this was too short, which hopefully it's not, um, you would be able to fix that by, you, you could probably get a longer muff coupling made up. So the, the muff coupler is, is these things. And that's what joins that to there 
kind of like that. Um, so I'm guessing I, I, I just have to assemble it and see where everything lines up. But it's another one of these differences between the different marks of Riley. And without having seen one or without having a car that I've stripped down, apart from that parts car, uh, it's really hard to know how all of the stuff is supposed to go together and which bits go together. Uh, these, this is the thrust bearing, the big thrust bearing that came out of it. So in, inside this one housing, there's two, two thrust bearings and two roller bearings, uh, which I did manage to get out. So I'll do a bit more research. If anybody knows, let me know, please, because I'm very confused, obviously. But I guess I just have to do a test assembly of it all, like I say, and, and see where everything falls. This is yet another difference that I can't quite figure out through the parts books. Um, the actual differential carrier itself with the spider gear. Um, this is the second one, second hand one I had to get from the UK. So the one that came with the car originally looks more like this one, although not exactly. Slightly different, I think. Um, but the, the gear teeth in it were all busted up. So it was easy for me to, easier just to get a, a good second hand one from the UK. But obviously it's different to this one. In the parts books it looks like this, but this one seems slightly different. Uh, what's the number on it? D1335 maybe? Uh, so this is a, an ENV, still with all the original ENV bolts and things, which is quite nice. Little stamped bolts. Uh, even the lock wash is a ENV. So, um, I might have to make new ones of these lock washers or wire them together, I'm, I'm not sure, um, because I, I'll have to have a look on the spares site and see if they've got parts for this one, but if I, if I have to make some of those by hand, that's not too bad. Uh, the this is correct. So the the half shafts do fit the splines on these. So I'm sure this is all correct. Um, this looks like it'll fit, although I can't tell until I take these these off. But again, I'm I'm just wondering what the difference is. Is is this from an earlier car and this is from the later ones, or, or how does that work? As long as it all goes together and and runs, I'm I'm happy. But. Um, the other thing, just quickly, while I'm talking about being daft, so my little lathe here, it's always um, been slightly annoying that it doesn't have a lock for the carriage. Uh, so whenever I've wanted to lock it, I've had to lock it on the um, with the uh, with the shaft and the half nuts here, and I really don't like doing that. It just never feels right, and. It never locks into exactly the position you want it to. This may need a bit of adjustment. Um, on my previous lathe, which was one of the little Chinese lathes, it didn't have one either, but I actually ended up fitting one. Uh, you can fit a, basically what you do is you make a plate that goes underneath the ways and you drill a hole through the, um, through the carriage here and use a, uh, like a lever or a bolt to lock it in place but looking at this again I suddenly realized um, this has always been like a, a socket head screw and it looks like it had red paint or something in it at some point I'm assuming that's original this one has always been a hex bolt and it, it finally occurred to me that that is probably how you lock this up because if you tighten that bolt, this doesn't move at all. So I think that is actually what that's for. That's the um, the lock for the carriage. So 
but I can find no mention of that at all in the in the manual. Maybe I've missed it, but I've looked several times, and uh, it's really not apparent. So another little mystery solved. As I say, I, the main reason I do these hobbies is just to keep learning new things, and I keep learning new things all the time. At the moment, I'm trying to get the torque tube center bearing back in place. And it's quite a tight fit inside here. So I've used the, the prop shaft to sort of drive it in. And you just kind of have to hope that the the holes line up when you get it in there so it's obviously shifted just a little bit but I should be able to sort of pull that round now and get the bolts back in there uh, and then I can call that done it's quite a tricky fiddly job and it's a bit annoying with the the captive um, ball socket thing here on the end just flapping around so I'm gonna have to touch up the paint on the on the torque tube where it's all it's all rattled around and banged against it but hopefully now I can get a a pin in there so I can pull it around so the bolts will go through I thought before I put the bolts in I'll try something I've been wanting to try for quite a long time which is um, oil blackening of the bolts so basically I heated these up with the the oxyacetylene not too hot and then you dip them in some vegetable oil I'm just using canola oil because it's what I grabbed out of the kitchen and it uh, it blackens the bolts for you so that seemed to come out pretty well I don't think you'd do that for any sort of steel that's heat treated so spring steel or anything like that but these little mild bolts it should be fine I did one other small job just to finish up today. I followed the example uh, that was on Tweed's garage where he's rebuilding a Riley 9 engine as well. And he showed how he had um, fixed up the oil pump eccentrics by drilling them out, fitting a brass plug, which was silver soldered in place and then re-drilling the holes. So I've, uh, I've done the same thing here on mine. Uh, the only thing I need to do is get a 5 16 reamer uh, to finish off the holes so they'll fit nicely on the, the pegs. It turns out I don't have one of those either. Um, I think that's kind of it for today. Thanks to the person who left the comment saying that the oil filler gasket should be leather as well. Um, so I just laser cut a new one of those. And that actually fits a lot better. It lets you do this up nice and tight and I've cut the leather gasket for the uh, torque tube oil reservoir filler. I need to figure out what I'm going to do with these rivets. Um, I think what I'll do is file off the back of them because they're too long and then reset them and I should just be able to make little knife cuts in the leather and then I can press them over the top of the rivets and that'll be enough to hold it. And this shows the difference uh, when you use the masking tape over the top of the cut. So the first one I did was just a, a quick one. I didn't do enough passes, which is why it didn't go all the way through. But you can see the amount of burning. And this is when I use the tape. It just makes a big difference. This is from the... Um, oil filler gasket. And you can see the tape just takes all the burning away bit of a mess at the moment I'm in the middle of trying to clean up and get some space back um, but one thing I've noticed over the last few days is my my workbench has been getting wobbly so I thought I'd better check the bolts that are holding it together and it turns out they're all loose so these are just bolted through with coach bolts but as I say they're, they're loose and I'm thinking it's because when I built this bench of course timber is really hard to get at the moment any sort of timber so when I built this all I could get was rough sawn timber and it was a little bit wet um, and I'm wondering if is the wood shrinking or changing as it's been drying out and so the, the bolts have come loose because I don't think they would shake loose 
um, I think the, maybe the wood's just shrunk a little bit. So, so I'm going around now, tightening everything up, and that's making it a lot better again. I think I've mentioned earlier that I did manage to get the center bearing back into the torque tube um, and got all that lined up with its O-ring in place. I just poured a ton of oil down the um, inside of the tube first to lubricate everything and it, uh, it went home and it wasn't too bad. And I finished the little cover plate. I did end up having to file uh, the, the top of this casting to get the plate to sit nicely so, it would, so it, it would actually fit up against the flange here and also so the mounting surface was nice and flat and it's a bit hard to see but I've got my leather gasket in there and this is actually meant to be a brass wing nut but I don't have any of those so it's just a, a brass manifold nut at the moment. Uh, I also laser cut the, the other torque tube gasket so that's ready to go. Um, I'm guessing that these studs go, um, you fix them to the end of the torque tube, I guess. Um, because that is going to make a difference where that gasket goes. So I'm not sure if that means I need to cut another gasket with holes big enough to clear these little studs. Uh, thinking I probably do actually because the nuts on the inside will be will be locked in place and I imagine you I, I can't remember when I took the spare parts car apart how that was assembled um, but now I've cut one gasket it's easy enough to cut more and I've had a good clean up just because everything was getting really messy and the other thing I've done is paint the head. Um, I finished my repair with the heli coils, so those are fixed. I've got a funny feeling it's it's just going to crack again eventually, but as long as it doesn't come loose, I think it'll be okay. And I think the heli coils will make it stronger. Uh, so I've just given this a, a paint touch up as well. <laughs> 